bit of a longer tutorial for you this time. I'm going to be editing two images using the raw workflow in Luminar. The first image is going to be a product image for the Stagwatch company. The second is a portrait from 2015, just to show you the difference that the software can make. I'll put up time codes for each piece of editing so that you can jump through it, because it is quite a long video this one. And I hope you find it useful. What we're going to do is we're going to edit two images. The first one being a product image, the second one being a portrait. And along the way, show you different tools and how to use them. First thing we do, click open image. Find the image that you want to edit. In this case, it's going to be this image here, which is the raw file, a Nikon raw file. Click open. You'll notice down here, image processing. That's it, reading the raw file for you. This image here was shot in the studio. I'm not going to crop it just now. I'm going to edit it first and then crop it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the shadows ever so slightly to deal with this area here. And I'm quite happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the highlights down. I'm concentrating on the watch face currently. Bring that down to about there. Close the filter panel. Next, I'm going to zoom in and show you how to clean up some small areas. First tool I'm going to use to clean up is the cone stamp tool. The cone stamp tool works the same way as Photoshop and you have to define a source. Over here you have the brush size which you can take down, take up, whatever you need. Also it is the square brackets on the keyboard. I'm going to take this down quite a bit and I'm going to select my source. To do this hold down the Alt key and click with the left mouse button and then just paint over and each time I need to move it you should hear the click of the mouse and I'm going to get into this area here to get rid of this one I won't spend too much time in this so that you can see different things that can be done and that's all I'll deal with for this part of the demonstration just gives you the idea of what it can do. Once you're quite happy, click done and you'll notice that it creates a new cone and stamp layer. This means that later on if you want to get back and delete the layer, you just select the layer, press the minus button. I've left these areas here and here, there's a hair here to show you another tool the erase tool. Select the erase tool. Now this here is a small piece of cotton from this which I missed when I was placing the product. What you do, draw over it. Press the erase tool. You will notice that it's add, subtract or lasso. We're just going to work with the add just now. Click erase and it's gone. Same with this area here. then click erase. It's not perfect but for the purpose of this it lets you see how it works. I'm also going to take out this hair here. To move across the screen when you're zoomed in hold down the space bar and click with the left mouse button and drag. I'm then going to draw over that click erase. Then I'm going to draw over this and click erase and there you'll see they're gone. Once you're happy with that click done and you'll notice that Luminar has created another layer for the erased image layer. Again, can be deleted if you hit the minus button. I'm going to zoom out by clicking on the screen. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen the image overall, but I'm going to create this in a new layer. So add new adjustment layer, add filters, go to sharpening. Again, same as any other editing package, it's best to zoom in when you're sharpening so that you don't overdo it. I'm going to sharpen the watch face ever so slightly. Quite happy at that. If I click up here, I can see the before and after of the image. Before, after. Turn that off. I'm then going to zoom back out. 
Next thing I'm going to do is use a polarizing filter to take a tiny bit of glare off the watch face. Add filters, polarizing filter, choose the drop down and get it to where I'm happy. That for me is way too much, that's a hundred percent. I'm going to take it to around there. Again, clicking that, before, after, before, after. But you'll notice that it's affected the entire image. I don't want it to affect the entire image. So what I'm going to do is in the polarizing filter layer, take this drop down, go into mask and invert. So that's put a hide all mask over it. I'm then going to paint in just on the watch face. So I'll choose the brush tool, choose the brush, make sure it's at paint, opacity 100%. I'm going to take the brush size down, which I can do here as well, or I can use the square brackets in the keyboard. I'm actually going to take it down even further so that you can see this. And I'm going to paint it in so that the polarizing is only affecting the watch face. And just to check that it's only affecting that, click the mask. This here is a hide all mask. The white area there is the watch face here. This here is a mask, it's a hide all mask. Black hides anything that you have done to the layer. The white allows you to paint in certain areas. What I can do with this mask, is I can go down here and copy it. That's under mask, copy. I can then go up to the sharpening, take the drop down, go to mask, and go to paste. When I paste this, you will notice that the same mask has been applied. So all the sharpening that we did to this entire image is only here now. That's just a quick way of showing you how to copy layers and to cut your time down. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the overall composition and to do that I'm going to get into the crop tool. For me I'm going to pull this up just ever so slightly and bring that down ever so slightly. You also have different aspect ratios here in the aspect. You can go 1 to 1, 2 to 3, 5 by 4, 8 by 10, everything's there and you can also change the angle as well when you're cropping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to about, just to about there. And then click done once you're happy. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another adjustment layer. This time it's going to be a structure layer. I'm only looking here and here in the areas with texture. So I'm going to choose the structure. I'm going to hide the panel. And then I'm going to push the structure. You'll notice that the pebbles in the foreground become slightly prominent. Everything is there. Again, what I'm going to do, I don't want the texture to be as prominent here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert my mask and I'm going to paint in the areas that I want to enhance the structure of. Choose the brush, choose paint, Capacity 100%, we'll just work at that for the purpose of this. And I am just going to gently go over there. So you'll see the areas in white is what is showing, the areas in black is not showing through. So I'm then going to go in here and then paint there. Just a tiny bit there. I could take my brush size down to do this but what I'm going to do just for the purpose of this tutorial is keep it at that size just for speed. So to see what we've painted there you go. You want to add extra bits go in and paint along the top of that, down there, down there. That area there, there. And just a tiny bit there. 
I may add some in here as well, but for this I'm going to take it down a bit because I don't want it to be too enhanced. Turn the mask off. The white areas show how much structure has been painted into the image. The black areas is how much we've held back. Let's have a look at before and after. Before, after, before, after. Subtle differences, but enough to make a difference. I'll turn that off. Last but not least, I am going to add a vignette to draw our eyes into the main part of the image. So I've added a new adjustment layer, add filters, choose vignette. I'll just leave the filters catalog open. Take the drop down, just about there. Now that I've seen the image, I want to pull back the background ever so slightly. And how I can do that is by adding another layer. So I'm going to choose add new layer. And this time we're going to go back and choose develop. What I'm going to do is bring back the exposure ever so slightly. That's probably about enough. With the develop module, you will notice that it isn't an option to create a mask. But what you can do, I want to bring back the brightness of this and still maintain the darker background. I choose the brush of the entire layer, choose brush, and I click erase. The opacity for this was at the last brush setting, which was 66. And I am just going to paint that in. Just so that I can maintain the background. and the previous edits that I did. Let me paint some over the stones, just to lighten them up ever so slightly. Just the odd one, there. Close the brush. So what we started with was this, which is the original NEF file. We then applied clone stamp, erased image to clean it up ever so slightly, an adjustment layer, which was sharpening and polarizer, and another adjustment layer, which was the structure, and we used an inverted mask to paint in just the areas we wanted to apply the structure to. We then created a vignette. We then used the develop module just to darken the background slightly. And there we have before, after. Before, after. You can see that it was just subtle changes to get the finished image we were looking for. I've left space up here with the image instead of cropping in tight, I've left that space for copy should there be any logos going onto this image. F for full screen and then F again to take you back to your working screen. Once you've done that, you have two options. If you're happy with your image and that is the final image that you're sending to your client or wherever you're going to use it, you can go file export and this pop-up window appears you have sharpen high medium low or none you resize original long edge short edge if you want to set it up for any social media or if it's a certain print size that your client is after color space adobe rgb pro photo rgb or srgb i'll just leave it at rgb for that format jpeg png tiff JPEG 2000, Photoshop or PDF. Again, I'm going to leave it as a JPEG. Rename it. I'm saving it to my desktop here. And I'm just going to click save. Your second option for saving. If you want to save it and come back and edit it later, you can go file, save. This window here appears and it says save original resources, save history, document size increases. Rename it and then click save. This is your icon and file type and as I've named this Stagwatch, if I double click this, it boots up your file with all the history of the edits. 
If I go through these, you can see vignette, structure, adjustment layer one, which was a sharpening polarizer. Here we have an image from 2015. This is the one we're going to use for the portrait edit. As you notice, the white balance wasn't set, so she is quite yellow. We're going to change all that. But before we start, we need to go in and clean up all the lens spots. How we do that is go into Tools, Clone Stamp. Again, like before, hold down Alt. Click once with the left mouse button to choose your source. And remember when you're cloning to choose areas close and tonal value and that will do us for now i'm going to zoom in and look at this area here to see how best to get rid of that plus and minus holding down i'm using a mac plus command in the keyboard and i'm going to see if i can take this one out i'm going to select the source and go in close to that here and then select another source go in close I would take my time, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, you can go overboard with this, but for the purpose of this, we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to sort these later. Then click done. We've cleaned up the image a little bit. I've missed a couple of areas, but that you would take more time in doing that. And you'll notice again it's created a clone and stamp layer. The workspace I'm going to use for the portrait is the portrait one, just to show you the speed that this works at. So we have develop, saturation, vibrance, lot mapping, soft glow, high key, image radiance, vignette, grain, dodge and burn, plus I'm going to add another couple of layers just to get the effect that I'm after. First thing I'm going to do is pull back the saturation. The white balance wasn't done when we first shot the image, so I'm going to pull it back ever so slightly. I'm then going to get into the develop, then I'm going to pull back the highlights, there's just a little too much for my liking. So pull them back ever so slightly. I'm going to get into the high key filter to show you what it can do, because I need to play around with this just to balance it out more to my liking. I'm going to push it ever so slightly in the amount. I am going to lift that slightly as well and you'll notice that the yellow hues are disappearing quite a lot. You could pull the saturation right back like so, quite happy with that. I'm then going to add a soft glow to the skin and you'll see what happens here. I take that all the way up, you should see that soft glow there but I only want it ever so slightly. So I'm going to add that about there. Everything that you've used is highlighted in yellow. Image radiance, the best way to look at the image radiance is fully zoomed out so that you can see your entire picture. I'm going to bring that up ever so If I take it too much, it softens the skin too much. So I'm going to go to about there just to give it that nice warm glow. Vignette I won't add just now, green I'm not going to add, dodge and burn I'm not even going to get into that at the moment. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer, a new adjustment layer and the filter I'm going to add here is structure and I'll show you why. Instead of pushing the structure which does that to the skin, I'm going to pull the structure back and you will notice if I zoom in there, if I take it right back it can soften the skin. So if you think of this as a slight frequency separation, we still need that texture in the skin so that she doesn't look plastic, but we can pull it back. See how that looks? Yep, you can still read the texture in the skin. We can turn the layer on and off so that you see the effects of the structure. There to there. This structure filter affects the entire image. So because we've drawn that back ever so slightly, it's affected here, the hair, everything down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the areas that the structure has not to affect. In this case for me it's the eyes, the nostrils, the lips, her top and her hair. I'm going to erase these and it will take it back to where it was before we added the structure. I'm only concentrating on the skin. Choose the brush, this time choose a raise and opacity 100 and I'm just going to paint over it. 
I'll just be quite liberal with this so that you can see the difference. To see where we've painted so far, click the mask. I'm then going to take the brush off, I'm going to zoom into her eyes. I'm going to put the brush back on. And then, still in the rays, I'm going to paint the eyes back in. So you'll notice this time when I go to the mask that the eyes are showing through it. Move across. To the other eye. Eyebrows. And I'm being quite quick with this. You should take your time when you're doing it. Just paint the nostrils and then the lips. And if you click the mask again, you can see the areas that's been affected. I'll zoom out and show you. If I click here, which is filter visibility, you can see the difference. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sharpen the hair, the eyes, the nostrils and the lips. So I've used the sharpening layer here. The mask is a normal mask for the sharpening layer. Back down to my structure layer. I'm going to copy the mask. I'm going to go up to the sharpening layer, which I've already set at 43. I'm going to get down to the mask and I'm going to hit paste. What you will see has happened, it's sharpened everything based on the mask from the previous layer. I need to invert that mask so that the eyes are sharp and it doesn't affect the skin. Go into the drop down menu, mask, invert. And did you see that the eyes pop there? If I zoom out, the hair will be sharper, the eyes will be sharper, the lips will be sharper. Everywhere I painted in the last layer has now has sharpening on it. Original, as we brought it in, edited. Original, edited. We can take the before and after to let you see the difference. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a tiny bit more structure to her eyes, maybe some of her hair. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in so that I can see them. I'm then going to add a new adjustment layer. I'm then going to go to Add Filters, Structure. I'm going to close the Filters catalog so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm then going to push this to extremes just to let you see it. So you see exactly what it does. Again, my thought process is working inverted. So I only want it to affect the eyes and any other parts of the image. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to mask, invert. I'm going to choose the brush. I'm going to go to paint and I'm only going to paint it in on the eyes. Now with any luck, you shouldn't see too much of a difference, but overall that will make a massive difference to the image. It's the subtle touches that make the big difference. So if I turn that off, you just see it dropping out no more. Turn it back on. I'm now going to choose the brush again and paint. And I'm going to paint in the hair just to add that tiny bit more structure to the hair. Something that we removed earlier, but I'm putting it back in now just to give a finished look to the image. Everybody edits differently, so it depends what your style is. So, what we have now is before and after, and you can see that's made a massive difference to the image. I'm gonna add another adjustment layer Add a filter, add a vignette. I'm just going to add a very slight vignette to this. Turn the vignette on and off. And to balance the image a bit better, I'm going to take a bit off that side. So I'm going to get into tools, crop. And I'm just going to drag that in to about there. And then click done. If I wanted to spend more time in the image, I would go in and clean up this area, go in and clean up here. 
pull back the highlights slightly more but what I can also do is if I add a new layer in this new adjustment layer I'm just going to add a preset to this image just to let you see how they work up here's the presets menu and here's the categories we have we have basic street outdoor portrait travel so on and so forth if we go into the portrait ones it gives you a preview down here of how your image is going to be you will get ones that you have a preference towards and for me it's cinematic bespoke I like the tones that it creates like Camden DSAT again that's pulled out too much of the shadows Crush the Blacks, Camden itself, I actually really like this preset here, but what I can do, I can pull back the intensity of the preset down here, or I can drop the opacity of the layer, so that we're not distracted by these at the moment, I'll turn that off. So if I take that back up, see the effect there I can pull it back slightly there but I also have the option of blending it through with layer blends I'm going to go with color but as I mentioned previously I'm going to show you how to take these out I actually would leave them in this image I'll take that out as well but this is just another way of taking them out what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into tools and I'm going to get into cone and stamp because I know this will create a new layer for me. Now that it's asked me to select a source, I'm going to select a source at the same tonal value as around here and I'm going to increase the brush size slightly for the purpose of this. I'll just get rid of that as well. And then I'm going to go over to this and do the exact same on this side. Go up to the top, scrolling the mouse, and then I'm going to take out this line here. And then I'm going to click done. Okay, I haven't cleaned up everything that I could for the purpose of this demo. But if I flick these on and off, you'll see the difference. It's a subtle difference, but it makes a difference. If you go overboard with your edits, that will stand out as well. Let's see the before and after. After, before, after. Now you can see how much of a difference that has made. Turn that off. Go full screen by clicking F. And that's another way of editing a portrait in Luminar. It's actually quicker doing it for yourself than watching this tutorial. Well, if you managed to last to the end of that video, well done. I hope you found the simple techniques I used for editing in Luminar useful and helpful for you. There'll be more to come and more in-depth ones. Thanks again for watching. Why does it always, why do you always stare at the camera when you do that? Thanks again for watching.